So this week I finally got my hands on brand new M5 iPad Pro. Uh, honestly, it took forever to get it there. Uh, it came so late actually, all these postal strikes and every day I was just checking, tracking like crazy. But hey, like we finally received it and I think that wait might actually been worth it. And that's how it looks. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like it looks exactly like my M4 iPad Pro. Uh, give me a minute. M4 iPad Pro, that's a new one, M5 iPad Pro. I don't think anyone can tell the difference. If I tell someone that's a new M5 iPad Pro, I don't think anyone can tell the difference. Like, they look identical, like. And if you look at the thickness, yeah, it's pretty similar. Yeah, and you guys can take a look one more time. That's how it looks. I mean, if you guys notice, I bought in Space Black. I mean, I don't like Space Black in MacBooks because they do catch a lot of fingerprints. I mean, it's the same case for the iPads. Just because, like, we can put a case on the top, so we can do something about it. But for the MacBooks, we can't do anything about it. We have to use it every single day and we have to clean it. And it's just, uh, I don't like that stuff. But yeah, silver doesn't give in iPads. Space Black. Yes, that's a really beautiful color. Box, you do get this braided cable and uh, same adapter. I'm pretty happy to see all these accessories in Apple products in these days, just because you never know when they actually stop giving us because they just come up with this idea to stop giving us these accessories. Now, I didn't spend any money on the Magic Keyboard because first of all, they're super expensive, $399 plus taxes. Uh, the other thing is I'm not a huge fan of Apple keyboards, like even for the MacBooks, if you guys watch my videos, you know better, like I don't like to use MacBook keyboards, I always use my external keyboards, being so great it's portable, I can travel with it and you know it's really really cheap compared to Apple. Keyboards are good but they're not good for like long sessions, like if you're more into like productivity or like if you like to do coding or if you're a creative person then I don't think that can be an ideal option. The key travel is not, you know to that point so I don't like it so that's why I don't like to spend money on the magic keyboards I actually bought it when I bought M4 iPad Pro I returned it because I didn't like it it looks like aesthetically pleasing but if you talk about real use like an actual use in your world then I don't think anyone would love to use the magic keyboard I have a uh, pencil pro already so when I bought M4 iPad Pro so no need to spend money on that too so I actually just bought the M5 iPad Pro, nothing else, no accessories. Uh, this case, I actually bought it from Amazon. That cost me like 20 bucks for M5 iPad Pro. Okay, so I'm gonna set up this new iPad Pro and uh, then I'm gonna use for this whole week uh, as a MacBook replacement. Like, to be honest, this iPad is like really, really expensive, like over uh, $1,000. Like this one cost $1,399 in Canada. That's really, really expensive, so I think there are a lot of people like want to see this iPad as a replacement for MacBooks because to be honest, like these iPads are super expensive. So anyone like, you know, spending this much money, if they're able to do like 90% of the work like MacBooks, I think it's worth of the money. And by the end of this week, I'll tell you guys like, how does it go if it's a MacBook replacement or like if it's not a MacBook replacement. The reason I'm uh, trying to do this because MacBook Air is like sitting around $1,000 in some of the stores because and this one is $1,399. So Apple actually didn't change the price with M4 iPad Pro and M5 iPad Pro. Like they were like, because I paid the same price for M4 iPad Pro, but like MacBook Air is like way cheaper than this iPad. So the inch is not uh, the 13 inch model because I like 13 inches like way big and it's, it doesn't even make a sense because MacBook Air is like, it comes in 13 inch. So I mean, you know, doesn't even make any sense. This one is 11 inch and I think it's perfect size for the iPads. Doesn't matter if it's a Apple's uh, iPad or like any other brand's iPad. Uh, 11 inch is perfect size. And that's a whole purpose for the tablets because they are like portable. If you're buying like 13 inch or like 14 inch tablets, then I think they will kill the bike. So yeah, the first impression, I'll be honest with you, it looks exactly like the M4 iPad Pro. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's no difference in the design, like when you look at it side by side. And right after unboxing, I went ahead and set everything up. But here's something interesting. 
Like, I don't know if it's just me, but the Face ID feels a little bit faster than on the M4. Like, the unlocking is instant and the general response time across the UI feels snappier. Uh, animations and the app launching is all just a little smooth. Uh, maybe it's just an M5 chip, maybe it's an iPad optimization, but there's a small difference you notice when you actually start using it. Um, it's not a huge jump, but nothing dramatic like, to be honest, but it's definitely more responsive. Okay, so I start my days as usual, like take a quick shower, uh, made a breakfast and sat down with my iPad to watch some YouTube videos. Uh, it's I know it's a pretty bad habit, but I usually like watch few YouTube videos and catch up some news and while I'm eating. In the mornings I get like a lot of light in my apartment. So here's something I noticed right away. So there's a lot of glares like on the display because I was sitting right beside the window. So depending on the angle. M5 iPad Pro has like 1000 nits of brightness too, so the brightness hasn't changed, which means like the clear issues is pretty much similar uh, like the M4. Uh, indoors, I mean, it's pretty fine, but if you're sitting next to a bright window or in a direct light, you will definitely notice it. If you're working professionally, then you should go for like nano texture glass. I know that's like a little expensive. And that's the one thing I wanna point out, like Apple should give us the option like in base model of iPads because you have to select like one TV to get nano texture option if you're planning to buy nano texture glass. So, I mean, that's like a little expensive. So I don't think like why they made something like that, but I feel like some people don't even need one TV, but yeah, you have to select one TV to get nano texture glass. But for someone who's like me, who just use iPad for like watching some content and doesn't do something professional because I'm not an artist, then yeah, that's not a problem that you guys don't have to spend any extra money on the nano texture glass. But if you work professionally, I would suggest to go for nano texture glass. I know this because my friend has this nano texture glass iPad and that's amazing. Like I know it's, it's good, but it's like way too extra money. So I don't like to spend on it. Uh, but yeah, if you work professionally, then yeah, go for nano texture glass. But if you ask me about the display itself, like it's a beautiful tandem OLED panel. Uh, watching content on it, it's such an amazing experience. Like colors really pop, blacks are deep, and for regular everyday use, it's honestly one of the nicest display I have ever used. Guys, I was also curious if this iPad could actually replace my MacBook. Uh, just for like normal workflow. So I attached my external keyboard and the mouse and I opened up my script writing app, just started working like I usually do. And honestly, the experience was kind of amazing. <laughs> like I wasn't expecting it to feel this smooth. Uh, it all felt like super seamless. The typing was responsive. The mouse worked perfectly. It was just a really clean setup. And for a second I was like, Yes, this might could actually replace my MacBook for basic stuff. So yeah, for the writing scripts, doing notes or the emails, it's honestly pretty solid. Like, I don't think iPad would actually keep up this well, but it really surprised me. I also tested the Procreate just I wanted to try something a little more creative uh, and to see like if there's any difference with M4 iPad Pro. And honestly, it felt like pretty much the same in actual use. Uh, the Apple Pencil performs like super smooth, its strokes come out clean, no lag, no weird jittering. Uh, the new chip definitely handles everything without even flinching. Uh, and you know, some people complain that magnet on the M4 iPad Pro wasn't really solid. Uh, but to me, like I never had any issues, not with the M4 and not with M5 either. Uh, like the pencil snaps on, stays on, and I never had it fall off in a backpack. Using a Procreate, like it's such a habit, like it gets addictive that you wanna learn everything. To be honest with you guys, but the Pencil Pro, like since I bought it for my M4 iPad Pro, uh, I don't use it much, like which I supposed to be because I paid the money for it. But I think it's pretty good for people like who are students, who are like work professionally, who are like artists, like I'm not an artist, so, I mean, it's not for me, so like, I just bought it because it looks nice or sometimes you can play with it. Time like M4, it does get stuck if you try to play like that, like if you try to slide it, like sometimes it just gets stuck, like not a lot, but yes, just sometimes. 
but with the M5 chip, it's really, really fast. Just don't spend the money on Tensile Pro if you don't want to use it. Like if you're just someone who's like me, who's not an artist or not in like school, then it's a waste of money. Because I'm using a lot because I'm working on Procreate, like I'm creating some wallpapers, but if you're not creating something or if you're just a regular person who just use iPad Pro not to create something, then don't spend your money on Pencil Pro, uh, just save your money. It's not worth it, but if you just want to have some fun, then then you can buy something from Facebook Marketplace, like a lot of people sell, like they use one, so you can save some money. But yeah, I mean, it's fun. Sometimes I just use it like just for the fun, but otherwise like, but I don't find myself to use it a lot because I like my comfort, so I use my fingers a lot for like sliding and for typing, I use my keyboard. So yeah, Pencil Pro, 100% it's for the pros, like people who actually like to create or like for the students. I don't usually game on the iPads, but I actually decided to try it on the M5 iPad Pro uh, just to see like how it handles performance wise. Like, and honestly, it's fabulous. Like it's way better than expected. The tandem OLED display makes a huge difference. Like the colors are vibrant, uh, the contrast is deep and everything just pops out in a way that makes games feels alive. I won't say it's a huge difference than the M4 iPad Pro, but I would say it's like 5-10% to better than M4 in terms of the performance. Uh, so yeah, if you're someone who likes to gaming on the iPads, you can definitely can, and you're gonna love the experience of the tandem OLED display. Uh, since Adobe Premium is now available on the iPads, uh, I decided to give it a try and add it an Instagram Reel on the M5 iPad Pro. Um, honestly, it worked really well. Like everything felt super smooth and the timeline was responsive and the touch controls made trimming and adjusting clips super intuitive. People who like adding like TikTok videos, Instagram reels or like to add it like YouTube videos, they can definitely do on this new iPad because it's really, really smooth on timeline. It doesn't even lag like my Windows laptop lags. This one doesn't. So yeah, I even tried the canvas and the experience was like super smooth same like if you guys want to add in the photos you can definitely can doesn't matter what app are you using like to be honest for quick content creation and the go this ipad really nails it like honestly it's kind of crazy how much you can get done like without even touching a laptop I'm editing instagram reels to tweaking photos in the canvas like everything just works super smooth and it makes you realize like how capable these iPads have become for real world use. Now after one week, if you guys ask me if this iPad Pro M5, is it MacBook replacement or not? Um, so it totally depends on your workflow. This new M5 chip, it's like for sure it's better than M4, but I would say like the difference is not huge. I mean, it is better and the price is like same. So I mean, if you're planning to buy a new one, you can definitely buy it, but but if you talk about the MacBook replacement, I would say like, yes, it can be replaced with this iPad because I used my keyboard. I used my magic mouse uh, with the iPad, which I never do uh, just for this experiment. So I tried it and yes, it does work flawless. There's like no problem. It does work exactly like the MacBook. For the multitasking and for the performance, I would say it's like 10 out of 10 because it works exactly like MacBook Pros because of the ProMotion display. That is, and you know, do work professionally. This is such a beast because now they can actually use it as in a MacBook because now there are so many apps they work really really good on this ipad because it used to be a thing like there are not so many apps available for ipads but now it's not the thing anymore pro if you guys want to use it as a macbook pro replacement i would say yes like yes you can do it like i feel like if you want to use it like as in a macbook then buy a macbook because macbook Air is like still thousand dollars still it's like sitting around thousand dollars in some stores if you really want to have the experience if you add like the magic keyboard, it's going to cost you around three to four hundred dollars. Pencil Pro again. So it's like a really expensive price. If you buy all the accessories, but on the other side, if you buy MacBook, that will still be cheaper and that will be like even better performance than iPads. Feel like the iPad Pros, they can replace, but they comes up with really hefty price. So if you're ready to pay the price, like go for it. If not, then, you know, but just buy the MacBook. 
You don't have to spend any extra money on the keyboards or like the mouse, you know, it will come up with everything. So, so yeah, that was my review. If you guys want this kind of review after a month or so, you can let me know. So yeah, if you still have any questions, you can guys can let me know. And yeah, I, was, I had like so much fun when I create these kind of videos. Uh, I actually find a lot of new stuff. Like I never used Magic Mouse before with iPads. And this time I actually used it, but I never used any keyboard with my iPad. This time I actually used it. So yeah, that was kind of fun. So yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. If you still have any question, you can shoot me a text on the Insta or you can um, leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Uh, but thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.